Now, any guesses what these two might have in common? You drift and you wander and you roam. And that away. And Bustino himself is one of the first to show from Grundy on the outside and then the highest racing up now and it's highest from Kinglet and Bustino, the three stable companions with star appeal on the outside of Bustino, then comes Grundy, then just in behind Grundy is Ashmore and then Dividale and then comes Dahlia, then on my way and... Mm. La Bassi and Peter O'Sullivan, but I assume that's not I assume <laughs> well, that's not the connection. You're right. They're both TV projections from the 1970s. Mm. So we had Dame Shirley Bassey performing in her third Royal Variety performance right. in 1971, and the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond stakes of 1975 getting mm -hmm. underway at Ascot. And there may not be an obvious connection, no. but they are both connected to our next guest, a vintage BBC TV outside broadcast truck <laughs> being brought back to life in Flintshire. Our reporter Rob Thomas is there for us this morning and can explain more. Rob, tell us more. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, this vehicle. It really brings back memories. When I came around the corner and saw it this morning, I thought, oh, yeah, I remember seeing those when I was a kid. With me, Steve Harris has actually restored this truck. Steve, you're, you're based here in Flintshire. You found this in a, in a field in Devon seven years ago. Um, it was actually um, in a Second World War aircraft hangar. Uh, it was being stored by somebody who was hoping to start a museum. Um, so uh, unfortunately uh, for him that didn't happen and the vehicle had just been left standing for many years and it actually left the BBC in 1982 so it had been um, it had been through um, a couple of hands uh, but uh, it you know hadn't really had any restoration work done on it and very briefly just describe it and what what it did well, uh, it was one of the, the fleet of nine colour mobile control rooms that the BBC had built shortly after the start of um, colour TV in 1967. Uh, it, this one was built in 1969 and it's the only survivor that's still on the road and complete. Um, they were used to cover... Oh, all the outside broadcast situations from you know like match of the day uh, uh, through to royal weddings and and you know large state occasions i've also with me this morning is professor john ellis from royal holloway college in in london you're in charge of the media department there you can tell me why it's parked up here at the north Apollo hotel in flinches this morning well we we're trying to show how television used to be made because when you look at it now old television you you wonder well why is it like that and and what we want to show is the sheer difficulty technical and physical of putting on a television program and we've got here cameras that it takes four people to lift we've got this huge truck full of complex electronics and nobody's really sure now and they weren't sure then whether any of it would work properly at the moment when they needed to do a live broadcast so we're going to bring all that back working with the people who were on this van and vans like it uh, in the 1970s so you're going to be filming them filming a darts match here in the hotel is that correct that's it we've got 12 cameras you can put in the in the palm of your hand looking at how people worked with the huge cables that were as thick as your arm and the cameras that take four people to lift to make an ordinary piece of television that would have gone out to millions of homes. So effectively this is like an oral history with the people who were involved actually demonstrating the skills they had back in the 1970s. That's absolutely it. They are they're not demonstrating, they're actually showing how they work together and that, that's really kind of the teamwork is the, 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 the big thing. How 15 20 people worked together they knew what they were going to do they knew how each other worked they knew the vagaries of the equipment and they're going to show actually how that all came together in a moment of live television it's really exciting it's the heroic age of television it's not like that now steve this truck just to describe it it's the size of a massive motorhome what's the future hold for it? i mean what will you be doing with it when it's not doing this today uh, we do quite a few events. We do some of the um, steam fairs and classic car shows. Uh, we've done uh, various other events. We've done things with Salford University. It's actually been over to Media City and been parked outside the BBC buildings in you know Media City in Manchester, where we've done um, a project with Salford University where, as uh, part of the Manchester Science Festival, uh, where we had a new um, 
satellite truck next to it and people were able to come and come and see how the technology has changed because really from 1970 until now is like um, you know like centuries in terms of broadcasting and electronic technology history. Well thank you very much for that Stephen just to give you some idea that, like I said this vehicle is the size of a motorhome and I know this is radio rather than TV but I'm talking to you from a little satellite dish which is basically the size uh, of a <laughs> laptop computer and that just goes to show how things have changed in the world of media yeah. in the last few years. There were no satellite trucks, there, was, sorry, there were no satellite dishes, there were no computers you, what you had was a load of very small black and white monitors <laughs> with the name Mullard written on the valves <laughs> if I remember right. They were amazing and do you know the best thing about that old truck he's got up there if you were driving it, you needed patience because I remember the one they had left over here. 30 miles an hour, tops, on a good day, like a downhill, float. in the wind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, ah, Hero marvellous. Heroic yeah. age of television. A throwback to the days of Muffin yeah. the Mule. Yeah. <laughs> that was Rob Thomas in Flincher for us. It, time now is a quarter to nine. This is Good Morning Wales with Rachel Garside and Peter Johnson. Our main stories this morning.